Personally, I'm hugely disappointed um, by the decision uh, of the UK government to reverse the policy that was set only a few months ago on the 28th of January this year. I think it's bad news for um, consumers in the UK as well, because you know they'll feel the impact on their, um, their phone and their phone bills, connectivity and, and the costs associated with that. So uh, disappointed and, and, and bad news. The unfortunate thing about it is that the UK was the second 5G network to launch in Europe. Um, the government's given huge support to the industry and encouragement to roll out. Um, and this is a reversal of, of that uh, activity. And 5G is not like the previous generations. It's what the next industrial revolution is going to be built on. So, you know, we feel that the competitive advantage that the UK had by releasing the spectrum early and um, early adopters will be, will be lost by this announcement. It's, it's very difficult to, um, to counter it directly um, because, you know, there are some people who just don't want to be convinced. You know, I hear, you know, largely the American commentators, you know, they, they link Huawei and the, and the Chinese state as if they're one of the same. Uh, you know, I don't hear people linking, you know, Amazon and Apple with the American state. You know, they, they are independent of the American state. You know, China has its own telecommunications equipment company, the Chinese state. Um, have an investment in their own, you know, we're not that company. We are a different company. And, you know, we operate in 170 countries worldwide. And, you know, we rely on the trust of those countries to, uh, to in our equipment to, to implement them in their critical national infrastructure. And that's been, that's, that's what's driven our company. Um, and, you know, our global presence that we're, you know, we are still growing, despite the huge pressure. Um, it, in the Chinese government, the American government, trade war. Um, and we need to find a way to navigate our way through that and convince those people who are yet to be convinced. We've got work to do. American motive for these activities is one of protecting American jobs. And it's following the America first principle. Uh, the, the US have given the whole globe a huge innovation over the last 30, 40 years, driven by massive investment in R&D. Um, the US have underinvested in wireless consistently since the second generation. Here we are in the fifth generation, they've underinvested, um, and as a result, they're behind the rest of the world. Uh, you know, there's two ways of winning a race. You can um, run faster, and in the tech world, that is investing in R&D, or you can trip up the competition. And the American administration have decided to trip up the competition. Companies like Huawei have had long and very successful trading relationships with the American tech sector. And they are crucial and have been crucial partners for us. Um, I don't see them um, seeking to stop trading with Huawei. They've been told by their government to stop trading with, with Huawei, and they're following the um, guidance or law within inside, within inside their country. That's making some American, some non-American uh, countries and companies feel that the American tech sector is not only underinvested in, in key sectors, but is also becoming unreliable um, because it's subject to the whim of the administration at that particular time. So whilst the target of these sanctions is Huawei today, the rest of the world is looking and making alternative plans, you know, finding alternative supply chains. And in, you know, our alternatives are not Chinese. Some of them are, but our alternatives come from all around the world, the French, Israeli, German. Um, and you know, whilst there are certain sectors the Americans still lead, you know, they don't have the monopoly on invention and other countries and companies are fulfilling that gap that is being imposed on the American tech, tech sector.